Okay. Originally from Middleton, Delaware. She received her Bachelor of Science in Home Economics from the University of Delaware. Ruth's son, Christopher, was deployed as an Army Ranger, closely following the September 11th attacks. A specialist on cipher was killed in action during Operation Enduring Freedom. And his loss to her compelled her growth to become dynamically involved with the American Gold Star Moms. She began her journey with the organization, helping with newsletter and website publications, and served as a national president from 2009 to 2010, and was responsible for initiating many initiatives, license plates in Pennsylvania, camp and started a campaign. Every state in the nation has some form of gold star activity. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruth Stonesider. It is an awful name to spell when you're ordering pizza, too. So, um, we gather here today to lay a tribute to those who have served our country in the armed forces. Because the Reeves Across America mission statement is honor, remember, and teach, I would like to briefly illustrate each with a story. The first is my own teachable moment about my involvement with Reeves Across America, then one about my son for remember, and finally reflections on honor. My son Chris was killed just 38 days after 9-11, when our country started major military operations in Afghanistan. As I worked through my grief, I joined the American Gold Star Mothers, volunteering to edit the organization's newsletter. At Christmas time, I needed to find an image to illustrate the last issue of the year. I remembered getting an email message with this wonderful picture of the Arlington tombstones with the snow and the wreaths and the red bows. That was the very lasting image that must have inspired a lot of us to come here today. Sorry. <laughs> well, I have to confess, I lifted it and used it in our magazine and then had us totally stay awake at night with second thoughts about copyright infringements. My only comfort was thinking that they probably won't sue the American Gold Star Mothers. It might have been a real PR nightmare for them, you know, harassing those poor moms. Two years later, when I met Moral Worcester and confessed my crime, he said they had lifted it also. <laughs> we had a good laugh because the service member who was wandering through the cemetery who took that picture gave it to the world willingly, and we are all better for seeing it. But on a more serious note, somewhere in our healing process, many of us as Gold Star Mothers experience moments of panic that our sons and daughters will be forgotten. We place memory markers to permanently verify the existence and passage of those bright spirits, the children whom we gave life and who once filled our hearts with hope and joy. Many of us write down the family stories and some tell, us, tell them over and over again as a way to keep our loved ones alive in our thoughts. I would like to tell you one about my son. Chris walked down a different path in life than most. He grew up in a world of Star Wars, read fine literature with delight, and wrote in journals his complex thoughts about life. He found himself drawn to the study of philosophy at the University of Delaware. However, after two years on the Dean's List, he chose a more creative path of study one where he chose and did everything in his power to avoid joining the establishment and the typical nine-to-five job. 
The Native American culture was a particular focus for him to study, learning to track and survival skills to meet his goal of going into the wilderness for a period of one year with just a knife. His hobby became his passion. Some of my fondest memories of Chris have to do with him coming home from time spent at a survival school in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. These week-long classes taught, taught students how to live off the land and create their own tools for survival. Chris learned several methods of making fire, building shelters using forest debris, tracking animals and foraging for food. His definition of the ultimate job would have been to become an Indian scout before Columbus ever set foot on our new world. He spent a great deal of time practicing one particular skill, walking through the woods without making any noise, stepping over dried leaves and twigs, sometimes barefoot and blindfolded, relying on his other senses to detect and avoid obstacles. The ultimate goal, he said, was to sneak up on a deer without being detected and then touch it before it was, knew it was being stalked. You would have assumed Chris was quite young when he took up this hobby, perhaps 12 or so, wandering around the woods without shoes. Actually, he was about 22. One of the things I admired about Chris was his youthful passion to learn skills that some might describe as ridiculous and useless, but he found unique and fascinating. Chris was never concerned by what others thought about his pursuits. One day, he came home from a walk at the Peace Valley Nature Center near where we live and said quietly, hey mom, I did the deer thing. I said, great, tell me about it. Then he hesitated and said, well, it probably didn't count. And then he explained to me that the deer that he got close enough to touch to was an actual young fawn. And I said, well, that counts. And he said, well, then he had to confess to me that the fawn was sound asleep. <laughs> he spotted it curled up on a high embankment near a small stream. Chris said he crept silently through the stream bed until he was less than six inches nose to nose. My son watched and waited, still and patient, until the fawn woke on his own, opening his huge eyes to find Chris's face well within his comfort zone. The baby deer stared for a long time, looking eye to eye at my smiling son and remembering to get up and finally look for his mother's familiar face. Chris said he giggled out loud as the fawn stumbled into the woods. Chris told this story with such a twinkle in his eye. He understood completely the gift he had been given that day, so I gave him the sleeping fawn merit badge even though he never reached out and actually disturbed the young deer. Chris learned to walk and use his body with confidence and grace. It was all coming together, the 75th Ranger Battalion training, his natural abilities. On his last visit home, I noticed that when he walked through the living room to sit and talk, I never heard his shoes touch the floor. I only sense the motion as he moves smoothly past my chair. He was like an owl taking flight, guiding effortlessly and silently through the air. Chris's best friend Luke explained to me after my son's funeral that the real test of an Apache Indian scout was to be able to sneak up, swat the bear on the behind, and run like the wind. While that image intrigues me, I prefer to remember my son as the sort of person who would not disturb a living thing for a thrill. I remember him as a man with a childlike wonder, graceful, independent, and mesmerized by the miracle of a small, vulnerable animal resting peacefully in the forest. This is just one of those stories our family tells and brings us a smile. I hope you will remember my Chris with a smile. And a final word in the Reese Across America mission statement is honor. 
I take great comfort in the knowledge that our country strives to preserve the memory of all our children who went to serve their country and did not return. This tradition um, is rooted in something George Washington wrote two centuries ago, quote, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional as to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. The real learning experience, aside from the copyright dilemma I obsessed about, came from my first experience at Arlington, watching a young mother and child push a baby buggy with a wreath in it up a hill and finally place it on a tombstone. As I watched her help her child place the wreath and gently touch the face of the stone, reading the name to her child and where he had served, my mind contemplated that someday when I am long gone and the letters are all worn down on my son's marker, a mother and child will climb the same hill that I do now and place a tribute and remember my son. That is what we are about to do today. Honor these great men and women who went into harm's way to protect our freedoms. Today you are a part of a grateful nation who remembers men and women who served and are buried in this hollow ground. Thank you for coming and participating. Honor, remember, and peace.